Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. This is our YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. Bam. Podcast below in the description. I need you to subscribe to that as well. Do it now. In a very competitive quarterback market, John, the Niners, like many others, interested in Matthew Stafford. The question is, do they have more than picks to offer the Lions? And would Jimmy Garoppolo do anything for Detroit? Well, I, I, I think we need to, before we talk about the picks, and the pick that's going to be talked about is number 12, and that's a powerful pick. It's going to be more powerful potentially than every other team that's going to be in the mix, assuming that I can't see him agreeing to like leave the Lions to go to the Panthers. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, I have a hard time seeing that. He would want to go, you could even argue the Niners, like, well, they've had one really good year out of the four Kyle's been there, but I think they're viewed a little bit differently like that. Clearly the media and us and the way football people talk about it, who, you know, we consider ourselves football guys too, but it's just the Niners are in the category. It's like the Saints and the Colts, even though those teams literally make playoffs every year, the Niners are like, yeah, we've been there once in uh, eight years, but that's just, that's the way they get considered. And I think it's fair because of Kyle. I do think we need to try to figure out, like, does Jimmy have any value? And eventually, I think he does in the sense of you saw last year, like Foles. Foles had this great moment in the Super Bowl, but for the most part, he's been pretty underwhelming in his career. But people always kind of wanted him because the Jags wanted him, then the Bears wanted him, where Jimmy has been highly thought of and started on the Niners Super Bowl team and was, you know, cultivated by Belichick there forever. That I do wonder if he still has value as, like, I get this guy as my quarterback. He, if I'm in a pinch, not even in a pinch, he's just better than a lot of other guys that I could acquire if I can't acquire, like, Deshaun Watson. And if Matt Stafford's leaving, right? So if I'm going to trade Matt Stafford and even just draft, let's say, Trey Lance or Zach Wilson or whoever, maybe I, I think it's becoming a little more in vogue to, like, sit a guy. I mean, the Chargers had planned to sit Justin Herbert. They sat Tua for a large period of time. But to sit a guy, you usually need a Tyrod Taylor, a Ryan Fitzpatrick. Now, Jimmy's more expensive than that guy. But his contract, if you do have the money, you'd just be switching Stafford for Jimmy. But, like, Jimmy is very flexible for you. You can just cut him at the end of the year. Maybe if he has a solid year, you can flip him. Uh, I, I do think you can talk yourself into value. Now, I don't think he has great value. Like, you're not getting back what you traded for him a second. But could you justify that as like a mid-round pick and just getting a starter that has been a starter for Kyle Shanahan, has been around Brady, like on paper brings a lot of positives to a room if you're going to need a quote-unquote bridge guy anyway, especially if you're kind of resetting. He's an expensive bridge. He, yeah, because he's $27 million against your cap. Um, I think the Foles example is interesting because when Foles went to Jacksonville, Correct me if I'm wrong. John Filippo was there as the offensive coordinator? Yes. And then and he had been with him in Philly. And then he goes to Chicago. And Matt Nagy's there. And he had been with him in Philly. Flip and there the Colts were also – what's that? John Filippo was there in Chicago. And John Filippo was there too. too. The oh. Colts were a team that were mentioned with him before they signed Phillip. And I think that was pretty real. They, The Bears ultimately – I, you know, reworked his contract and gave him a little more cash. But Frank Reich, more. same deal. Yeah. Was in Philly. Knew him. Like, I think with Jimmy, I don't know if he's got a lot of value to a team that doesn't have somebody that has seen him up close and thinks there's value. That's where the Texans come in. The Texans might. Now, again, I'm not talking about him in the context of a Deshaun trade. I'm talking about him in a context where maybe they trade Deshaun away and then they make a separate move with the 49ers. Yeah. For Jimmy, what about what about what what if you want to bring Jimmy in to compete with Daniel Jones, and if you're the Giants, hypothetically, and Joe Judge had spent time around him? I would have a hard time, John, spending twenty seven million dollars on a quarterback when the cap's going down. Who's not going to be my starter? I, my sixth round, but but Jimmy Garoppolo is better than Daniel Jones. What yeah, Daniel but I'm Jones just saying, like this guy's. If I'm trying to win, this guy better be really good because he might be twenty. He might be not twenty percent of my cap, but almost twenty percent of my cap. Yeah, that's where it's a struggle. And and the other thing is like the Lions are the Lions trying to be good this year? No, but I, you always need that. You need someone to play quarterback. Yeah. Like when the when Kyle Shanahan showed up and hit, he blew it up. Right. I mean, it was already kind of blown up. He brought in Brian Hoyer. 
I, when Brian Flores went to Miami, like you, Fitzpat, you just need that individual. Now, Jimmy is much more expensive than that, but I do think he's won, and he's been highly thought of by high-level coaches. And it can just, if you do have the financial flexibility, I also think like for Stafford, let's say another team, Houston or the Giants or something, you could trade Jimmy if they don't want Jimmy you know, a separate deal and use that pick to trade, to package with like 12 and, you know, one of your third round picks or you got, or maybe that's a fourth round pick or whatever it may be. Belichick takes them right back uh, in a situation. I think Jimmy has value just from on the standpoint. Sean that, Payton. Yeah. But that's where I get back to Dan Campbell. We knew Sean Payton really liked Jimmy Garoppolo and they had been he played in the mix really well against trade. him two years ago, he played well against him. Who was on that staff? Dan Campbell. Who was his assistant head coach? Dan Campbell. They Dan Campbell's an offensive guy. Like they talked about Jimmy Garoppolo. That's where I think the Detroit situation is a little unique with having been around Sean Payton, seen him up close and personal in that game. I just wouldn't rule it out. Now, I'm not saying like I see way too much of like a second and Jimmy for Stafford. Jimmy and uh, a one and a two for Deshaun. Like I don't think his value is that great, but he does have value. I, I think there's a difference of People acting like he's a premium asset, he's not. And people acting like he's trash, he's not. He's a complicated asset because he's injured, he's expensive, but when he's on the field, he's much better than most of the quarterbacks all these teams could acquire. Like the Bears. If Jimmy Garoppolo could start 16 games for the Bears next year, that is an upgrade over what they've had. Bars low. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I also think, you know, if he's going to get you a fifth-round pick— and you're going to use the 12th pick to acquire a quarterback, let's just say for the sake of conversation, Trey Lance is the 49ers quarterback. And the Lions are also going to acquire a quarterback, but they also want Jimmy there so they don't have to start that rookie quarterback. It might make sense for the Niners to keep Jimmy Garoppolo around if their new quarterback is cheap. If their new quarterback is Matt Stafford, then that doesn't make sense. But if their new yep. quarterback is a quarterback... It yeah. might make sense for Jimmy Garoppolo to remain on the roster if he has no great value on the trade market. Yes. If Matt Stafford, Jimmy Garoppolo will survive if Matt Stafford is not on the team. Or Deshaun Watson or something like that level. And they draft him. Unless they hate him. Unless they're like, we don't want him around anymore. We just want Trey Lance to be here. We can just play. I think I can play right away with him. Right? But Kyle you, Shanahan you, had a lot of success. But you wouldn't trade Jimmy through. Garoppolo before Trey Lance, right? You'd have to know. No, you'd, you'd have know to know. You'd be able yeah. to get him. You'd have to know. But I'm just saying, like, Kyle Shanahan might think. I'm not convinced that Kyle thinks that, that if he drafts a rookie, he needs to keep Jimmy around. I, I could very – in yeah. fact, I, if you asked me, I, I would think Kyle thinks if he drafts a quarterback, he's playing that guy yeah. um, because he had so much success with, with Robert as a rookie. Now, Robert was – Second you know, overall pick. Second overall pick, but we're, but you're drafting 12, so if you're drafting a quarterback, you're, try, you're probably getting him at 8 or 9 or something. you got to move that, up. That, that is very fair. He won. He made the playoffs that year with a rookie quarterback, and he changed an offense that has nothing to do with his offense, right? I, it's not honestly, even a player. He didn't even gets, want the player. That year gets almost underrated with the sh- both totally. the dad and Kyle. Like, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, we just uh, implemented this offense that they ran at Nevada. We just you know, put it all in. I think it also gets underrated for Robert. Like, Robert Griffin bust. It's like, yeah, remember the rookie of the year? Yeah. But remember, luck was better. His stats were a little better. I, understand. They I forget good. about the award. It's just I know, he was I know really good. So. It's almost like Shanahan's know what they're doing. Yeah, I you know, I I would be pro if you draft a quarterback starting that guy and using the money that you're saving on Garoppolo on a bunch of other players because you have other needs. I would be It's not a, it's not out of the realm of possibility that they draft a quarterback that let's just say Jimmy stays on the roster they're not able to acquire any of these guys cuz they deem Stafford too expensive, maybe the Colts overpay. I doubt they would ever be in the Deshaun Watson mix. Jimmy stays, they're able to land quarterback X, maybe they trade Jimmy the next day to the Patriots, right? We've seen Bill's very patient, and he'll just kind of sit and wait. And maybe he can get Jimmy for a fifth, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I think it. I think it is. I'm with you. Just because they draft a guy, there's no guarantee that Jimmy stays. And I think that's kind of conventional wisdom. Like, I still well, you can draft I w- a guy, you still have Jimmy. I look as someone who has said for a while. I let's not just assume Jimmy's not going to be back. 
I think if they draft a quarterback with their first pick, I, I would say it's over 50% that he's gone. Because he cost um, tw- cause I, I could see I'd Kyle probably thinking- lean 50-50. Okay. Because you because you're kind of spending your money. Cause your money it'd be kind of irrelevant by the draft time. It's not like, well, he's got Nadama can sue uh, seven other sweet dudes out there. You, you, everyone gets paid. You got to get rid of Jimmy to That's use true. that money in middle of March. Mm-hmm. Like by the time the draft hits, it's more just about you'd get rid of them because maybe you'd want flexibility to maybe pull a trade. Could you give, could right? you give a free agent just a Zenny endorsement deal and then restructure their contract after the draft? Well, I think you've probably all used up Zenny's marketing budget. You'd have to use like Ike's or <laughs> uh, Mr. Got, Pickles. Zenny's too deep <laughs> yeah. in the kittles. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, that, that got the extra. You know, we're like, how did they only get him for 30 guaranteed? Well, because the, the Zenny 10 what million over billboards? five years if, made up for it. Has anyone driven in the Bay Area lately? It's nothing but Zenny kittle billboards everywhere. When I, pl- when I played Harding Park like a couple weeks ago, driving by the Bay Bridge, I saw George Kittle like you. seven different times. And his wife, seven. Claire. Seven. Oh my God, he's fucking everywhere. I, trust me, we as someone who's looked into it for marketing, those billboards are not cheap, especially the digital ones. Even in Corona. Zenny is spending some cash. 